The search for consistent characters in AI has always been a nightmare. Too many suggestions, too many processes. But in this video, I'll reveal a surprisingly simple method using the open pose control net to drive multiple poses using flags. Then I'll show how to take any profile image to achieve consistent flawless faces using the pool ID custom node. So let's start by installing the custom node for pool ID. Open up comfy UI, then we go to the manager. Down here, make sure to update to the latest version of Comfy UI. Once done, go to the Custom Nodes Manager, then search Pool ID. I'll be using the Custom Node here, which is the Pool ID Flux Enhanced. After the installation, we need to get the Flux Pool ID model. Go ahead to visit the Hugging Face page here. Download the model file name here, which is Pool ID Flux .save tensor. Go to your Comfy UI directory down to models folder look for the folder pool id if you don't have this i'll go ahead to create a new folder here then i'll rename this to pool id once done open the folder then save the pool id flux model in here the next step is to install the face lip and also inside face but if you don't have this installed yet go ahead to the comfy ui windows portable in here, open up the Python embedded folder. I'll click on the folder path up here, then I'll type in CMD. Hit enter to open the command terminal, paste in the command here. Click enter to start the installation for facelift. Once you see this, it means the installation is done for facelift. So I'll go ahead to close the terminal here. Now let's install inside face. First of all, visit the page here on GitHub. Go ahead to download the inside face file of the Python version you have installed. So this one here worked for me, even though I had a Python 10 version. Next, click on the file, then use the download icon here. Save the downloaded file under the Comfy UI Windows portable version, which I have here. Next, you right click to copy the file path, then open the Python embedded folder. Go to the file path directory once again, type cmd to open the terminal. Then put in the command here as python.exe space mpip install and space. Then we go ahead to paste the path we copied earlier. Space once again, then type onn x runtime. Hit enter to install inside face. So be patient since this might take a little bit of time depending on your system. But once you see this, it means the installation is done. Then I'll go ahead to close the terminal. Now let's get the models for inside face. And we are going to download the file name which is antelope v2. So click here to download it. This will be downloaded as a zip file. Go to the directory of comfy UI, go down to models. Find the folder here which is inside face. If you don't have the folder, you can create a new folder. Then I'll rename this to inside face. Once done, open the inside face folder, create another new folder, then rename this as models. Open the models folder. Now click save to keep and download the antelope file in here. Once the file is downloaded and done, right click to extract the zip file. We no longer need a zip file once this is extracted. Open the antelope folder and there will be another folder here which contains all the files we need for inside face. So right click this to move this folder one step back, then paste it here to override the existing folder. So let's confirm the inside face folder structure. Click to open inside face, then open your models to find the antelope folder. Then the antelope folder should have all the models. All right, awesome. So I hope you guys have this structured properly. Once we have everything installed, let's close and restart Comfy UI. Also, make sure to close the command terminal. Now I'll go ahead to reopen Comfy UI. Let's start with the pull ID workflow for Flask. First, I'll go ahead to right click to add a node. If you installed everything correctly, scroll down and you should find pull ID. Then select apply pull ID Flask. Next, I'll add a load image node, then drag the face you want to use of your character sheet in here. Then connect this into the image input. Add another node, go down to pool ID. This time, select the load pool ID flux model. 
we need two additional nodes from here so select the load inside face then also select the load ava clip now let's connect these nodes i'll zoom into the load model node in here i'll select the model pool id flags.save tensor we have downloaded earlier then drag this into the pool id flux input secondly drag the clip ava into the ava clip the inside face node goes into the face analysis input and selecting cpu here works fine uh, next i'll leave everything at default here you can bring down the weight if you want depending on your results later in the video but for now i'll only change the weight max here to 0.7 which worked well for me so let's center all of this I'll hold control drag to highlight all these nodes and place this into a group. Let's rename this to face group for our inside face workflow. So let's move down the canvas here and using flux, let's create a simple workflow for a simple text to image generation. So first right click to add a node, go to loaders, then select the load checkpoint. I'll click here from the list and I'll choose the FP8 flux dev checkpoint. Next, I'll add a power LoRa loader from the RG3 custom node. And this will make it easy for us to stack multiple LoRa's. So from the list here, I'll also use the Flux table LoRa. This will speed up the rendering time by using only 8 steps. Now we need a clip text and code for our prompts. Then I'll duplicate this. I'll change the top color to be green for positive. Then I'll change the lower node to be red for the negative prompts. Before we connect these nodes, let's also add the case sampler. Go to sampling, then select case sampler. Now the model from the checkpoint node goes into the power LoRa loader node, then drag from that into the case sampler model input. We do the same for the clip, which goes into the LoRa but this links into the clip text and code positive and negative. Then drag the positive into the case sampler positive, then the same from the negative input. To connect the VAE, uh, right click to add node, go to everywhere, select anything everywhere. Then link the VAE into this node. This will connect to every VAE input automatically in the workflow. Next, I'll drag this out, then I'll double click, then search SDXL empty. Uh, this will show up here and I'll choose the one from RG3. Since we are using Flux, we need SDXL resolutions to work with. So from the list here, I'll use 1216 by H32. So, so far, if you don't have the RG3 custom node, uh, head to the manager, click on custom nodes manager, search RG3 and you can install this from the list here. Alright, back to the workflow, I'll drag out the latent from the case sampler, down to select VAE, which will give us our final image. Also, you can create a folder for your project to save all your images in the save image node. So let's go ahead to try out the workflow if everything is connected correctly so far. I'll zoom to the positive prompt here. Uh, let's use a prompt for a character with a mohawk wearing a Victorian era suit in different poses and angles including the front view, side view, turnaround sheet and the background is a serene beach at sunset. Uh, we only need a positive prompt so I can collapse the negative down here. Then moving to the case sampler, I'll input a seed number, something easy. I'll keep this at fixed. Then I'll decrease the steps at eight because the table LoRa only needs eight steps. For the CFG, this needs to be one since we are using the FP8 flux checkpoint model. Then I'll also change the jeweler schedule to simple. Let's zoom out from here. Also, I want to include another LoRa for more details for flask. I'll select the Flux Detailer LoRa from the list. I'll zoom out from here once again and let's hit Q prompt to see our first generation so far. Alright, we have our generation here and this is very good. The quality from Flux is always impressive. However, we only have three poses of the character. So how do we get more poses if we want different angles of the same guy? Uh, to do this, I'll first place the nodes into groups to clean things up. Then before we join the input phase, I'll also move up here on the canvas to build a workflow for controlling. First, we need the load image node, then drag the reference image of the character poses in here. To extract the poses from the image, I'll use the aux preprocessor. 
I'll drag this down. Then in here, I'll select the DW processor to extract the open pose from the image. Also, I'll change the resolution to 832, similar as the image. Add another node, go to conditioning, control net, then select apply control net with VAE. Connect the load image into the preprocessor, then this goes into the apply control net. The VAE will be automatically connected from the everywhere node we have earlier. Drag the control net input out, then select load control net model. I'll select the union model for flags dev by Shaker Labs. Then I'll drag this out and let's see a preview of the open pose from the image. Hit Q prompt. All right, this is working good. So let's place all of these nodes into a control net group. Then I'll rename this to control net. Let's center all the workflows and how do we join the three separate workflows to get the desired results. To do this, first disconnect the model from the K sampler, then link this into the apply pool ID flux node. Then this goes back into the K sampler. Uh, I'll go ahead to tidy things up just a little bit. Next, we connect the control net group. So disconnect the positive and the negative from the K sampler, then join them both into the apply control net node respectively. After this, link the positive and the negative back into the K sampler. I'll also go ahead to lower the control net strength to 0.6, then the end percent to 0.4. Try out different strength numbers along with the end percent to see what works. This is very, very important. So we have all the three workflows linked together and this is way easy, right? From here, let's go ahead to hit Q prompt. All right, we have a multi-view character sheet with all our poses. After correctly joining the workflows, we can see the face reference from pool ID as well as control net now is influencing the image with multiple poses. However, if you don't want to do this, you can still use the workflow for consistent single images with the face you want. So simply drag any image you want to influence the character into the control net image node. Then you can use the same preprocessor, but I'll change this to use the depth. I'll change the resolution now to 768 since it's a vertical image. Then also I'll move down to the empty latent image. Don't forget this. Then select a vertical ratio here as well to match your control net image. I'll zoom out from here and this is all we need to do. We can hit Q prompt. All right, another stunning result here. So with a character sheet or a single image, we can see the face we want to use as well as the control net influence. So you can play around with the seed as well to see uh, the best outcome, similar to some various examples I got here as well. Now zooming in here, we can see the face is now highly detailed. So I have used the ultimate upscale node to improve the facial details. As you guys can see here, this is way better. However, I'll zoom out of here quickly and the trick is to use the right upscale model, which I discovered from Mick. His channel has been very helpful and this makes the detail more sharper and the focus is more clearer. So to get the model, head to the page here, then download the model file, save it into your comfy UI directory, go to models, find the upscale models folder, then save it in here. After this, back in Comfy UI, use the refresh node definitions in Comfy UI. From the upscale, this feather goes into the face detailer for more enhancement to recover all the details. And the overall quality is way much better as you guys can see. So this workflow will be available in the description plus all my other workflows you guys can find on Gumroad which are all listed here for free. However, I'll advise to practice by following step by step to create these workflows on your own the power lies in repetition as usual remember to leave a like if you found this helpful and this video on your screen now has more to say about using flux redux to style your control net influence with any image and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next video